plate to potential nugget. And moving to maybe uh, breaking free from uh, bad habits, you also use the back to also being specific about language. You mentioned that breaking a habit is possibly not the right language, and untangling it is more like it. What's yeah. what's the nuance? The way you see it, uh, BJ? I am so glad you're asking all these questions about terminology. Um, it really, it's maybe I'll just do an acti- academic paper just on this. The language around behavior changes held us back, and this word "break bad habits" has been one of the one of the problems because "break" implies that if you put a lot of force in at one moment, like breaking a stick, it'll be done. So a lot of force, a lot of energy in one moment is how you solve it. That's not how these kinds of habits get solved. It's not about a one-time thing that gets people to stop gambling or stop drinking or stop gaming or whatever the addiction is or whatever the bad habit is. So I am proposing and explaining how a better word is untangle unwanted habits. And that then implies a process. Just like if you think of your phone headset all tangled up, wow, it looks overwhelming. You're not going to solve it just by yanking on it in one moment. But you know that if you take the easiest tangle, not the hardest, and undo that, and then go to the next easiest one, that you'll get there. Same thing with these things that we call bad habits. They tend to be things, snacking is a pretty easy example to use. So if you have a, you consider a bad habit of, you know, eating bad foods as a snack, it's not just one thing. It's probably there's a snack in the morning, there's a snack at lunch, snack driving home, snack in the evening, snack at 3 a.m. So it's a tangle uh, uh, that we call a habit, but really it's uh, all these habits connected together. And so you take the easiest snacking habit to stop, the easiest one, not the hardest one, and you design that out of your life. And then you go to the next one and the next one. And so I think untangling really sets the expectation much better that it's a process and really maps very well to how you look at a tangled rope or a phone head set. At first, it's overwhelming, and you're like, oh, my gosh. But then as you get started, you see it starts resolving, and then pretty soon it comes completely clear. It it untangles. And so I think that's right on for how many of these unwanted habits work. This nugget from BJ reminds me of the movie Martian, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Matt Damon. In the movie... Matt Damon's character ends up getting stranded on Mars and he battles a near-death situation to slowly treat himself, establish connect with Earth, figures out a language of communication and solves multiple low-probability problems to find himself back on the Earth. In the concluding scene of the movie, Matt Damon is addressing a few young graduates at the NASA and he says the only option you have is to keep moving and solving one problem at a time. That's your only shot at staying alive and coming back home. I guess there's a similar point to be made here. A lot of people treat breaking habits as a one-off dramatic event, but I guess it's much more organic and much more slow burn than we think it is. One of the tactical things BJ suggests in the book is that we break down the bad habit into minor behaviors that show up in our lives. Then we start going after them one tiny hill at a time and slowly work on untangling the habit. Thank you for listening. If you find this of value, do take a moment to visit the podcast archives at platerpotential.com. You might specifically like the section curated playlists where about 500 plus podcast nuggets have been painstakingly curated by theme for easy access.